Hello and welcome to episode 122 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is seven and Jasper who is five. No, Arthur is eight and Jasper is five. That's not good, getting my kids' birth ages wrong always confuses me. Um, Today is... Thursday? No, Friday the 2nd of September. Oh goodness, I should have checked this. Yes, it's Friday the 2nd of September. (laughs) And as always, this is my um, crafting podcast where I talk about kind of whatever knitting projects, crochet projects I'm working on. This week I've got a little bit of cross stitch to talk about. Basically whatever crafting projects I am currently working on. If you are new and you've not come across the podcast before, then I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns. And as I just said, this is a crafting podcast. So yeah, I think I've done all the intro stuff. Hello. (laughs) Welcome back, as always, to everyone that watches on a regular basis. And hello to anyone that is checking out the podcast for the first time. We've had a few new viewers over the last few weeks. Um, I was about to say the last few podcasts, but it was a big gap, wasn't it? So over the last couple of weeks since the last podcast, we've had a few new viewers. Um, So hello to those new people. Thank you for coming and checking out the podcast. Um, I hope you are enjoying it. Right, what have I got for you today? I'm going to start off as always with a little bit of an announcement, an announce, oh words are failing me, a little bit of an announcement section. I've got no finished objects this week, but I do have some works in progress to talk about. I may not have finished objects, but I do have three new cast-ons because, yeah, I needed some new projects to just kind of motivate me a little bit, I think. Um, Yeah, so I will share those with you. And then I'll finish up with a little bit of shop news as well. So, announcements. Um, Although before I get into the announcements, I am in a new location. I'm still in my office. I'm just sat in a slightly different location. Um, I was saying about feeling a little bit exposed where I was sat before on the sofa bed because I'm right next to the window. Also, lighting wise, I've got the window coming at the side of me when I'm sat there. So I need to put my studio light up in the other direction. But I've moved to sit in front of the, the wall of yarn, the shop yarn. Oh, look, the sheep is upside down and showing his bum to you. I have my little pom-pom sheep that lives on my shelves. Um, Which means that the window is actually right at the front of the room. Um, This end of the room gets quite dark because it's only got the one window, but I've got my studio light set up in front of me. So hopefully the lighting looks pretty good at the moment. So we will will see. Um, I am on my office chair, which means I'm on a spinny chair. So I shall try not to keep kind of spinning backwards and forwards. Um, But the temptation is, um, yeah the temptation is strong. Um, But yeah, let me know what you think. Do you like the wall of yarn behind me? Um, I feel less exposed, definitely, because actually my studio light is blocking my view of the window, so I won't catch glimpses of people walking up and down the street outside while I'm recording, Um, and hopefully the big studio light will block their view of me, um, so that might make me feel a little bit less exposed while I'm recording in my office. Okay, shall we actually get into the announcements now? Oh, although I've just realised I've forgotten to bring something over. Right, I'm going to go get it, and then we'll get into the announcements. Okay, so, announcements. Um, Just basically make-alongs. So, as always, we've got the Giddy Yarns make-along. The next um, quarterly prize draw for that will be at the end of September, I believe. Yes, I did the June one in the last episode because of um, summer break. But the next quarter ends at the end of September, so that's when the next prizes will be drawn. Um, As always with that, any project that you're working on that uses at least 50% of my yarn, so at least 50% of Giddy Yarns, is eligible for entry. No special requirements, doesn't have to be a new project. Just as soon as you finish a project, pop it to enter wherever. Um, You can enter on Ravelry, you can enter in Mighty Networks, you can enter on Instagram. All the details of where to enter are down below underneath the video. Um, But we do have a new make-along, which technically started yesterday. I had intended to sit down and record yesterday, but um, I needed to get the rest of the clubs packed up, and getting the clubs packed and shipped was my priority. So they've all shipped today, which means I'm able to sit down and record today. But, yeah, technically 
it started yesterday um, and that is our Halloween make along now there is the I'm trying to I didn't know if I made a note of it oh, I think it's the fifth year of our annual Halloween make along um, so basically I like to keep the prompt for this one pretty loose and easy because I know Halloween is not everybody's favourite thing. I, I love Halloween, I don't know why, I've always loved Halloween. Um, it's just, there's something fun about it that I really, really enjoy. Um, so basically, Halloween make long, works in progress are fine as long as they're less than 50% complete. Um, you have to have a finished object to enter, um, but you've got up until the 31st of October to get your project finished. And as long as you can, in some way, link your project to Halloween or horror or even just general supernatural stuff, then you are, that's fine, you're eligible to enter. Um, I, I have quite a lot of fun sometimes reading through the posts and seeing all the tenuous links um, to Halloween that people make. But yeah, as long as you can, as long as you can link it in some way to Halloween horror or something kind of supernatural, mystical, that kind of thing, um, then it's absolutely fine. Um, yarn wise, you can use anything. There are no restrictions on what type of yarn you have to use. You don't have to use mine. You don't have to use indie dyed yarn. You don't have to use. Um, yeah, you can use commercial yarn, cotton yarn, whatever yarn you want to use for your project, that's absolutely fine. And as long as you can link either the yarn or the pattern that you're using or whatever you're making in some way, then that's fine. Um, what else did I need to say about that? Entry, as always, is on all of the three places that you can enter any of our make-alongs. So I will be popping up threads in the Ravelry group. Um, I will be, um, we've got a thing on Mighty Networks already actually, so I'll double check what the topic is called on Mighty Networks or I'll start a new one. Um, and on Instagram there will be a hashtag which I can't remember if I said last week, I'm not sure. Um, I will double check where I've put details, I may have put details underneath last week's video. There will definitely be details underneath this week's video and I will put the hashtag on the screen. I don't want to say what it is in case I've not already said it what it is and then I get it wrong and I confuse everyone. So the hashtag will be on the screen now. Um, so this is the one that you can use on Instagram. Um, if you pop FO at the end, that's your final entry, your finished object, and that will be your entry. If you want to chatter about it and kind of share your progress and stuff like that, um, just leave the FO off the end and that will be kind of like a chatter hashtag. Um, this is always kind of my big, my big make along of the year and I love it so much. It's so much fun. Um, I do have some prizes that from last year that weren't claimed. Um, I think because I had quite a few people enter on Instagram who weren't necessarily watching the podcast. Um, so they obviously missed their prize when it got announced. Um, and I gave them a good month to kind of get hold of it and nobody ever got in contact with me about those ones. Um, but, so they will be available this year. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but if anybody out there, any makers or anything out there would like to donate prizes for the Halloween make along, then that is amazing. That would be fantastic. Just get in touch with me. Um, and I will of course be donating prizes as well for the Halloween make along. Um, I don't know what yet. We'll see. I do have plans for Halloween, Halloween yarns. Right, that's the make-along stuff. I, that's what I went to get. Um, I have decided what I'm going to make for the Halloween make-along, although if you are new here, I am notoriously bad at keeping up with any of my make-alongs and finishing projects for any of my make-alongs. So we'll see whether this actually happens. Um, but I have dug out of my stash this skein of yarn from um, Suzanne at Green, Lam Green Lambkin Yarns. She is the queen of Halloween yarns, pretty much. Um, and yeah, well worth a pop over to her website and have a little look because she will always have Halloween yarns available. Um, and this skein was very kindly gifted to me by Suzanne last year. And this is her Jelloween, it's focusing on my face too much. Stop focusing on my face and focus on the yarn. There we go. This is her Jelloween colorway. Um, it's on a sparkle sock and I'm going to knit a pair of socks. I think I'm going to go with, oh I've forgotten the name of the designer, but I think I'm going to go with the Sanderson 
so Sanderson sisters so or the si I'm gonna look it up quickly um it's a it is a sock pattern um it is a oh I've forgotten the name of the the super famous um Halloween film with witches that everybody's obsessed with that I have to admit I don't think I've seen um is this uh, where is it oh Hocus Pocus is the name of the film um so there are two sock patterns that I was looking at so I thought they were I thought I had the other ones on here maybe I don't oh no there we go so there's either the Sanderson sisters which is a sock pattern by Sarah Lozzi or the other one that I'm tempted by is the um a little bit of Hocus Pocus socks which is by This Handmade Life and actually looking at them again on my phone just now I think I might go with the a little bit of Hocus Pocus socks because they are I'll pop what I'll do is I'll pop a picture of them up on the screen here so you can see what they look like but they are um one of those pairs of socks that is quite a lot of vanilla knitting with just kind of one cable section down the side and I love socks like that um so I think that's what I'm going to go with and I'm going to use this yarn so hopefully I will find time to get this caked up today and I can get that cast on. I'm going to try and be good and I'm going to try and knit them concurrently. Um, so I'm going to get both ribs cast on and then work down the legs because I find I'm less likely to get second sock syndrome. I wish I'd done that with my um, Yuletide socks but I didn't which was daft. But anyway so yeah Halloween yarn ready to get cast on. Should we move on to some actual knitting? Should we actually get on to some works in progress? Right I cast on quite a lot of things this week or over the last couple of weeks so I've not made masses of progress on the things that I already had cast on um, but I have added a little bit of progress to Tom's um, July socks which are these ones here um, so I've got the heel in and I am starting to kind of work my way down the foot of these. So these are back to being nice, simple, round and round knitting, which is good. And I'm kind of focusing on these ones at the moment to try and get these ones finished. Um, I added, I don't think I added any to the June socks. This is the June colorway. I don't think I added any to the June socks. I've got another 30 rows or so to go until I get to the heel of that one. But I did cast on the August colour of the month because again I needed the swatch um, to for the shop sample um, so I have cast that one on and started working down the leg of that one and this is the August colourway I'm really pleased with this colourway I love how it came out I love those little pops of kind of the turquoisey blue in there with the um with the autumny colours I'll pop up actually quickly this is the image that I'm basing it on um if you're new and you don't know, each month in the shop I do a colour of the month at the moment um, which I have been using the Wombo Dream Art app which is like an artificial intelligence art thing. So you put in a keyword as a prompt and you pick an art style and um, the artificial intelligence creates digital art based off that and then I'm using those images to inspire the colourways that I dye each month. Um, and this was August's um, so yeah this is in the these are all in fact I think I've got all of these colorways in the shop at the moment um, but yeah slowly making progress on those I do have three cast on at the moment which is a little bit a little bit too much in my brain um, but I just need to get on with them don't I as long as I've got them for the the samples for the shop then it's fine and eventually they'll get eventually I'll catch up with them um, so that's those ones Yuletide socks. I don't know where I'd got to with the Yuletide socks so I'm going to say these again because I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I'd finished the first one but I hadn't cast on the second one, is that right? So yeah, I'd finished the first one. Um, this is the Yuletide socks. Um, this is a pattern by, by Suzanne of Green Lambkin Yarns um, called the Yuletide socks. It's a lovely kind of cabled, oh, it's not cabled, it's a, fa it's a fake cable um but it's a really nice kind of lace pattern and as I was saying I wish I'd knit these concurrently because I'm now casting on the second sock um and 
I feel like I've been knitting these all year. I mean, I have been knitting these all year, but it, yeah, I feel I wish I'd knit them concurrently because I feel like I'd have made more progress. But I have cast on the rib of the second one. Um, so it's got, again, it's this kind of fake cabled, this fake cabled rib. So I think I finished the rib and I'm ready to start working down the leg now. Um, but they will probably get a bit less work on while I do my Halloween socks. Um, but hopefully I'll get them done before Christmas. I think that's my goal with these, is to get them done before Christmas and these can be my Christmas socks this year. What else have I been working on? I'm gonna have a quick sip of tea before it gets completely cold. My Mamer cardigan has had a little bit of work on it. Um, I do keep picking this up every so often. I'm desperate to get past the point of separating for the sleeves because I think that's gonna make a massive difference. And I think last time I recorded, I was where my little dragon is. Um, that's a corner of craft beaded stitch marker. So I was where my little dragon is. So I've made a good, a good inch, at least an inch of progress, which considering the length of the rows at the moment is pretty good going. Um, I'm knitting this in my through the wardrobe colorway, which is actually, that's one nice thing being by the yarn, I can show you the colourways in the skin. That's actually, it's this colourway here. This is one of my Narnia collections. Um, so I love how this knits up. I'm alternating skeins because obviously this is um, a hand-dyed yarn and it's quite a, um, a sort of tonal variegated hand-dyed yarn. Um, so you really kind of want to alternate skeins so that you don't get any weird pooling or patches. Um, but it's working I get that back in the shelf. Um, it's working out quite nicely. I'm loving the way this is knitting up. I, I just love this. I can't wait. I really want to wear it, <laughs> but I need to actually finish knitting it before I can do that, don't I? Um, so yeah, it still needs a bit more progress, um, but I'm not that far. Where's my pattern? Let's have a quick look on the pattern, shall we? I am about four, eight, 12, 15 rows. I am 15 rows away from separating for the sleeves. So that isn't too bad, really. We'll get there eventually. Um, the other project that I've been working on, well, so there's three new cast-ons and I've also been working on a little bit this week. I dug out my cross stitch, which I haven't done in absolutely ages. Um, and if you're a regular viewer of the podcast, you will look at this and you'll go, Oh, have you still not finished it? And the answer is no, I haven't. I still haven't finished it. I have been working on these, a set of three cross stitch patterns for years, absolutely years. The idea, I think I started them when we moved to Scotland and the idea was that they were gonna go above our bed. I don't think I have a whole picture of the finished the finished thing. I'm just kind of checking through to see if I do, but I don't think I do. Um, they're going to go above our bed. Um, and they will do eventually. I finished two of them. Um, and this is the third one. So this is kind of where I'm at so far. Let's have a look. I can show this. There we go. So the idea with this one is that it's got all of these flowers around the outside and I'm currently working on kind of this section here. Um, so I can come in a bit closer. I'm getting, getting a shadow on, but I think it's the shadow of my camera, which wasn't happening earlier. Oh, there we go. I think the sun had gone in. <laughs> That's better. Um, yeah, which I'm currently working on this section here. Um, and I've done all of kind of the top half of the, um, I've done all of the top half of the flowers and my plan is to finish all the flowers and then do the centre section and the centre section is basically a big scroll with the words and they lived happily ever after in it um, and then the other ones which if you're again if you're a regular viewer you will have seen um, they are one of them, again, it has the same style of flowers around the outside of it, but it says in the middle, it says, um, home is where the pants aren't, and the other one says, home is where the bra isn't, or something like that, anyway. Um, and I'm going to put them up on the wall above our bed, um, eventually, when they finally get done. But I just need to make time for it. It's like everything else, isn't it? You just need to find the time to spend, and cross-stitch is a slow craft. 
it takes you know you can spend the whole evening and feel like you've barely made any progress at all um, but I have picked it up and I am slowly slowly working on it um, right so that's kind of all the works in progress that I've got to share I have cast on three new things um, two are just things that I cast on because I wanted to cast them on and I was in the need, I was in need of a new project. That's kind of what I've been feeling. I was feeling a little bit bored with everything that I was currently working on and I just needed something new to kind of give me a bit of a kickstart. Um, and I was also looking at my stash and thinking, God, all I'm working on is stuff in my yarn. I really need to actually kind of cast on some of my stash because that's going to get ridiculous. So I cast on two new projects. Um, start with the one I've made the least progress on. They're all, as always, living in little grey girl bags. I've not been sharing what bags I've been working on. I have got a couple. My Adama, not my Adama, my Mama. My Mama cardigan is living in an Eldenwood craft bag. Um, one of Emma's bags. Is that, that's just, oh, that's her website on the back. There you go, that's the actual label there. Um, Emma makes gorgeous, gorgeous bags. I think I just showed you that upside down. Um, so I, I have got one of those on the go. Um, everything else was in Gems bags as well. Um, there is one project that's in a different bag. So I have cast on a hat. This is, I have no idea what the name of this hat is. This hat is. This is the Toasted Marshmallow Hat by Shannon Larson, who is Just Living Designs. We go. I actually printed out a picture. So this is the hat pattern, um, and there's the details. The toasted marshmallow hat. Um, and I wanted something that was fingering weight and um, mohair held together, but I also wanted something that was quite a simple pattern. I didn't want. I was looking at some of the other ones that I've done before. Um, I was looking at the. Oh, I've forgotten the name of the hat. Kimber, the Kimber hat by um, Norichan Knits, which I've knit before. And actually, I'd love to do that one again because the one I knit before actually came out a bit big. So I'd love to knit a version of that with um, slightly smaller needles. And my mum has that now. Um, but I wanted something simpler. I wanted something, and this is basically just a kind of um, a knits and pearls kind of almost like a, um, I don't know if you can really tell on the picture. I don't know if I can get that to focus oh they, no that, that's quite clear so basically you're kind of just doing like knits and pearls sections of knits and pearls so it's kind of based on a rib um i don't know kind of the wording that i want for it um but yeah so i cast it on and i'm using yarn that i picked up at the wool lay retreat last december um, and i actually picked up two skeins of kelly's yarn um, when we went to the shop and they're both the same colourway um, so they're from her Squiddle Village collection and they are both called Maggie um, so here's the two colourways and so I've got one on her merino nylon base um, just a four ply fingering weight and then I've got one on the mohair which is a mohair and silk um, you know, the kind of mohair fluffy base thing. Um, but this is the mohair one rather than the Surrey alpaca one. Um, and I'm holding them together to knit this hat. And this is this is kind of how I'm getting on. Not, I'm not getting on very well. Well, it's not that I'm not getting on very well. I'm on the rib and it's a lot of rib. It's a folded brim rib. So um, I've done maybe two inches of rib. Um, so I think I'm about halfway through the rib. Um, but I'm getting there. I'm loving how it's knitting up. I'm loving the combination. I mean, obviously these are two of the same colours, but I'm loving the kind of combination with the mohair. I'm not the biggest mohair fan. And I've said that before. I don't dye it for the shop because honestly, it smells like a goat. It smells like, you know, like when you go to the zoo or you go to like a petting farm and there's like a goat enclosure and you walk past it and you just get that smell of goat. Yeah, it just smells like wet stinky goat when you dye it um nowadays it might not be so bad because actually dyeing it in my oven it's probably not as bad as when i used to dye it in the kitchen and i think when i last tried it i used to dye in the kitchen and it used to stink the house out and i hated it whereas now i'm dying in the utility room which i can kind of shut off from the house 
and I can open the windows and dying in my oven it might not be too bad so maybe I'll give it another go but I also I really don't like handling it when it's wet because it sheds I mean mohair if you've worked with mohair you'll know that it sheds anyway like if you're knitting with mohair then by the time you finish knitting you're covered in fluff um, so it sheds anyway but when you're handling when it's wet like I just I don't like the feel of that kind of wet shedded fluff all over my fingers <laughs> I know I'm precious <laughs> but um yeah I, I I don't particularly enjoy enjoy dyeing it but and I also don't particularly enjoy wearing it the only way that I do tend to enjoy wearing mohair is in a hat um and I was thinking about it and actually my hat the hat that I wear most during the winter is my everyday slouchy beanie um, which is a pattern by Tristan, who is um, Dragon Horde Yarn, Dragon Horde Designs. Um, and I knit that using uh, fingering weight and mohair held together. And I wear it almost constantly in the winter and it is super cosy and it's really, really nice. Um, so although I probably wouldn't wear a mohair jumper or cowl or scarf I think against my neck and my arms I just would find it uncomfortable I find it fine on my head um so yeah we have a hat a mohair hat in progress and lots of rambling about mohair um so that will hopefully see a bit more progress um and it's just nice to have a project I was just desperate to knit hat I've got loads and loads of pom-poms that I've kind of collected loads and loads of um I've got a few from um Crafty Bird I've got a couple of the um alpaca ones who the company's gone the toft ones I've got a few of the toft ones and I've also got a couple that I got from for my birthday via um Georgie at the Fiber Fox as well so I thought why have I got all these pom-poms I need more hats I need to knit more hats so that I can put pom-poms on them so I started a hat I also started now this is a project the yarn has been caked up for absolutely years I think I'd initially in added this to a make nine back in 2019 and then I had never cast it on so once again it's in a little grey girl bag because I have a obscene amount of little grey girl bags <laughs> um, but this is the Adama cowl which is let me see if I can get ah all the bits and pieces out of the bag that I need um, so this is the Adama cowl which is as I said it's a pattern that has been on my radar for absolutely ages I got gifted this yarn in um, a yarn swap absolutely ages and ages and ages ago and um then I've just I, I kind of it, it, it's quite chunky it's a worsted weight and I was trying to find a pattern basically that would work for a worsted weight yarn and the amount I had two skeins of it this is the yarn um it's a Malabrigo worsted um and it is it, I think it's in the kaleidoscope colorway kaleidos it's called there we go it's this one so it's Malabrigo worsted in the Kaleidos colourway um, so I was desperately looking for something that would work with the amount of yarn I wanted to try and use both skeins or at least get into both skeins um, and I'd found this pattern absolutely ages ago it's called the Adama cowl um, which is a reference to um, Battlestar Galactica um, and it's just this kind of gorgeous cozy cowl um, it's a pattern by um, the yarning ad who is Hilary Smith Callis and I have cast it on um, and I've actually got a fair way I have joined in the round now so you start out knitting it it's going to need some good blocking because this is actually a single ply uh, it's a single ply worsted yarn um, so it's definitely going to need some good blocking but you start it like a shawl with a garter tab cast on um, and then you kind of start off knitting backwards and forwards and then you join in the round um, to then sort of turn it into the cowl so I've joined in the round there and this is kind of where I'm at basically um, it's got this kind of nice lace pattern on it um, and I'm very aware that I'm doing this in quite a highly variegated yarn so I'm not expecting the lace to be very clear in the final 
the final project um but i'm quite happy with it i love the color i love the way that the color's working up i love kind of how bright and colorful it is and i tend to wear quite a dark coat so i've got like at the moment i've got a gray coat i might get a new coat this winter actually because i've had that one i've had it for years and i think it might be a little bit snug this year um, so we may have to invest in a new coat, but I'd probably get something similar. So I tend to have like a grey, a grey kind of winter coat, something like that. So with this kind of tucked in at the collar and popping out the top, I think it'll look quite nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've actually made a fair amount of progress. I mean, obviously this is um, kind of a, a worsted weight yarn, so it knits up fairly quickly. Um, the lace pattern is relatively simple as well. Although I do think I made a mistake and I can't for the life of me work out what I did. I really can't because in this section here you've got um, like a full diamond in the lace and then in this section I seem to have cut off one end of the diamond. So I really don't know maybe I started it on the wrong row or I really don't know. I, maybe I'm just imagining it. Maybe I, I don't think they were different charts either. I've got no idea what I've done. But anyway, at the, at the, in, the, in the scheme of things, at the end of the day, like you're not gonna notice that when it's all scrunched up around my neck, are you? Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping actually that it won't take too long to get finished. I don't think I've got, I'm trying to think how much more have I got to do on it? Let's have a look in the pattern, shall we? Um, so I am there. Um, yeah, I think I've got maybe one more section of the big of the lace. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that far through it, actually. I'm pretty much I'm nearly at the end of section three. And there are four sections. So yeah, I've got one more section of lace to do. And then that will be it. So not too bad. Um, but yeah, just a fun project to get cast on, something a bit different. Uh, it's also nice to finally have this yarn. I mean, this yarn has been caked up in this bag for absolutely ages. Um, so it was quite nice to find a project and reach for a project that I already had the yarn even caked up and ready for. Um, so yeah, that's that project. Now, the final project, I can't show you in colour. <laughs> because I have cast on um, a sample for this year's advent calendar because I've now got all the colours finalised and I'm well into the process of dyeing them all um, so I just thought to myself oh actually if I get a sample cast on now then maybe maybe um, I'll be able to share a few reveals throughout December as everyone's opening their advent calendars with a project in progress kind of thing um, so I will have to switch to black and white, which I will do now, and um, I can show you the project. So I have cast on the Adventuresome Wrap, which is an Amber, an Amber O'Brien, no, I want to say Amber O'Brien, is that right? Yeah, it is Amber O'Brien, an Amber O'Brien pattern. Amber O'Brien is basically the queen of advent patterns. She has got so many patterns designed to work specifically with 24 mini skeins um, for the advent season. Um, and I have done the first two repeats. Um, so this is a relatively simple kind of lace pattern. Um, it creates a kind of um, a wavy shape. <laughs> that didn't come out well did it um it's hard to tell at the moment because obviously I'm only kind of two repeats in you've got these wonderful kind of little lacy bits it's a really simple lace this this hole here looks like it should be really complicated but actually it's really relatively simple um because it's a wrap um, the rows aren't horrendously long either, which is quite nice because um, you can kind of work back and forth and you don't end up with massive long rows. Um, and then with this one, you do add a contrast colour or a coordinating colour, um, which I have done. Um, I went for a light grey, um, which I think will work well throughout all of this. Um, I did have a little look at a few different colours and you could have gone with kind of a darker grey um, and I think that would look quite nice with all the colours um, but that wasn't really to my taste, like I, I tended, I wanted the lighter grey to kind of lighten things a little bit but a dark grey would work fine, you could also go with an undyed yarn, that would work well too 
um, but I went for the light grey. This is actually this is actually a colourway that a newer a newish colourway that hasn't been in the shop yet. I don't think it's called Pebble. It's been to um, yarn shows with me, but it's not actually ended up in the shop. And I don't think I've got anything. I think I stole. Yeah, I stole the last skein off the shelf, but I will be dyeing more of it up um, because I definitely want to make sure it's available in case people want to add it to their advent um, for something like this. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying how it's working up. I'm loving how the colours are working and I can't wait to see kind of more, more colours added. I'm just starting to add the third advent colour. Um, so yeah, that's that one. I'm hoping that by December I will be at least halfway through it, if not more, and then I can kind of work on it throughout December so that hopefully kind of by Christmas I can do a full reveal of the whole advent in a project. Um, that would be really good, but we will see. We will see how it goes. You know what I'm like. Um, trying to keep up with projects is never a good, never a good plan. Right, that is everything in terms of my crafting, I think. Um, I've not bought any blankets, I've not really worked on blankets over the last couple of weeks. Um, that's pretty much everything I've worked on. Yeah, a couple of new cast-ons. Next week, or next uh, time I record, hopefully I'll have another new cast-on. Hopefully I will have cast on those Halloween socks. I am going to try and get that yarn caked up today, I think. Um, so let's finish off. I don't have any yarny goodness to share with you. Um, so let's finish off with some shop news. Um, September's clubs are currently in the shop at the moment. That is the last club of quarter three. So if you bought the quarterly set, don't worry, you've already got September coming to you. Um, August's shipped um, yesterday and today, so they should be with you over the next few days. Um, but yeah, September is in the shop until Monday. Um, September for the Beatrix Potter Club is Mr. Todd, the tale of Mr. Todd. And for the Middle Earth Minis Club, we're just in the last the last set for the two towers um, and then towards the end of September I mean I'll probably talk about this on the podcast more I'm just looking at when am I podcasting um, yeah I will be I'll be podcasting before but um, then towards the end of September the um, clubs will be back up again and that will be the next quarterly one the final quarterly club okay the other things are things that went into the shop last week um, so first off, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the August colour of the month. Um, so as always, my colour of the month is available on 120 gram sock sets, 70 gram, woo, I'm all fingers, 70 gram sock sets, and then there's also a couple of just plain 100 gram skeins as well. Um, these don't tend to go up pre-order in any way. So basically what is in the shop is in the shop. Once they sold out, that's it. Um, but there are plenty available in there at the moment. So that is the August colour of the month. Um, with the colour of the month, a couple of people have asked me about next year and whether I'm going to do the colour of the month next year. And I'm thinking about, I'm definitely going to do something. I don't think I'm going to use the Wombo artificial intelligence art thing. I think what I'll probably do is I think I might just pick an image each month. Um, so whether I'm, I might just do something a bit more seasonal and just pick some kind of kind of seasonal image um, to inspire it or I haven't quite decided yet but there'll be a different type of image being used but I will do something each month in a similar kind of theme as this um, but I'm not 100% sure yet whether I'm going to make that into a form of club or whether I'm going to offer it pre-order wise or quite what I'm going to do with it um, yeah I haven't quite decided yet what I might do is dye up one batch so I've got photos to take and then maybe pop up pre-orders for it um, and then they ship the same month something I might do something like that I'm not sure yet I'm really not sure but it will be continuing in some form um, and then so basically it's like a club but it won't be a mystery um, because you'll get to see the yarn before you purchase um, so it won't be a mystery club, but you'd be able to, I might, I might do it that way. So I might do it so that um, I pop up pre-orders instead of dying up a whole load. Because I do end up with some leftover some months. And it, whereas pre-orders, you obviously um, 
control the amount of yarn you dye because you dye based on how many you've had ordered um, which means that you don't end up with loads sitting around not selling um, so I think that's what I might do I might dye up one batch do photographs and everything like that and then pop it up as a pre-order once I can kind of do the reveal if that makes sense um, and then I can also do my um, mystery clubs alongside that um, yeah we'll see that's kind of what I'm thinking um, what else is in stock? I've also popped a whole load of minis in stock at the moment. So there are a few of these bundles which are um, actually left over from last year's um, Marvellous Monthly Minis Club. I found a whole load of the purple ones. Um, they're on a mix. I think I've got um, four ply, 20 gram four ply, 20 gram DK, uh, 20 gram yeah, 20 gram four ply, 20 gram DK, and also some 10 gram ones. And then I've also got some of the red, the sort of pink to red ones as well. And again, these are ones that are on DK. I think there's some four ply or there's some 10 grams. I'm not 100% sure, but they're all on the shop. I've also popped up a whole host of mini bundles. So there are a load of kind of DK mini bundles, um, lots of 10 gram ones. Um, in various different kind of colour sets um, and there's also one random 20 gram bundle which is a bit of a mix of it's the leftovers from some of the purple faded bits with a couple of other minis thrown in that I had <laughs> basically um, and then I've also set up, sent up a whole load of palette sets so my palette sets are basically um, 20 gram semi-solid mini skeins um, and I just put them together in colours that I think work well together. Um, so I really like this one. I'm tempted to steal this one. This would make a good gnome. <laughs> These colours would make a good gnome. Um, and I've just put them together in various different kind of colour sets. I've got them in um, four ply, um, merino nylon. I really like this one as well. That would make a nice gnome too. I always look at these and think, oh, that would make a good gnome. Or scrappy socks or all kinds of things. Um, there's loads and loads of different ones. Um, I think these are all of the, these are all of the um, four ply ones. So there's pinks and purples. There's just pinks. Um, there's, oh, that's, that's quite a nice one as well. Kind of pinks and oranges and browns. Um, all kinds of ones. I also have a whole host on um, BFL um on stellina and on merino bamboo but they're on the shelf and i didn't get them off the shelf um so yeah that's those ones i've dropped a dk mini bundle on the floor Let's just gently move that one out of the way um and then finally the last thing is i am now a higher higher stockist um so i currently have um in the shop i have got um higher higher sharps um this is going to be good with the light up isn't it it's all gonna all gonna glare higher higher sharps um and i've got these on the nine inch circulars um i've also got a few i've got some 40 40 centimeter ones which are ideal for hats i've gone for kind of um the sizes that you would tend to use for um four ply or dk hats i've got some 60 centimeter ones which are ideal for kind of cowls and those slightly bigger projects and again, I've tried to go for sizes that you would tend to use for um, sizes that you would tend to use for um, four ply or DK. And then I've also got 80 centimeter ones, which I've got in sock sizes, because um, 80 centimeter is what I tend to use for Magic Loop. And then I've also got them in kind of shawl sizes. Um, and then the same, I've got 100 centimeter ones in shawl sizes as well. And I've got the same across both the higher, higher sharps and just the plain higher higher steels as well um, so there's a whole section on my website which is now kind of higher higher needles and accessories um, I also have some accessories so I've got the little um, panda needle stoppers um, sort of point protectors um, which are these ones here so they are little um, little pandas that have got little holes 
little holes in their bum <laughs> um, and you pop them on the end of your needles um, to kind of stop your stitches falling off your needles or also to kind of stop especially if you're using like the higher higher sharps um, they stop your needles from poking through your project bags and stabbing you in the fingers um, they're also super cute they come in a few different colors you just when you order you just get a random color um, but by color I literally mean like the color of the sock that the panda is knitting um, is different. The actual pandas themselves are the same. Um, so there's those. I've also got a few different snips. Um, I love the higher, higher snips. I use these all the time. They're perfect for propping in project bags. They're also great for traveling because they're not an issue on planes or anything. Um, so I've got the octopus snips. I've got the, um, I think these are the Sleepy Kitty ones. I'm gonna take these out of their little bags because it'll be easier to show you. Um, so these are the little Sleepy Kitty, is that gonna show? Can you see that there? There you go. Um, and these are great because they just pop out and then they're just like little mini scissors and then they pop back in again. Um, and then I've also got little dogs as well. Where's the little dogs? These are the little dogs as well. So they kind of look like they've got a little dog face on the top. Um, again, they come in a whole range of colours and you'll just get a random colour when you order. But they're all nice colours. And then the final thing I've got is these little higher, higher tins. Um, which have all got little, they've got about, I think it's 12 um, stitch markers, little bulb stitch markers in, these little kind of, these little bulb ones that are really, really handy. Um, I use these for marking my rows on socks, um, so I know kind of how many rows I've done without having to count every time. I just pop one of these in every 10 rows as I'm knitting on my socks, um, and I know how many rows I need. Um, the cases are, the tins are actually a fairly good size because as you can see there's still loads of room in there. Um, so you could add loads of other stitch markers or progress keepers in the tins or even pop a darning needle in there um, so that you're all ready kind of to kitchen your toe when you get there. Actually I wonder, this is a good test isn't it? Maybe I should have checked this beforehand. They do! Um, the little snips fit in the tin as well. So actually, you've got your stitch markers in there, you could pop a set of snips, snips in, you could pop your darning needles in there, um, and then you're pretty much all ready to knit your socks and you've got everything you need to finish them off. Um, so yeah, there's those as well. Um, and they're all, all available on my website, um, and they should, in theory, all be set up to go large letter postage as well, um, as long as I've done that correctly. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's everything. I think that was quite a big shop news section, but um, yeah, getting all the higher, higher stuff in has been quite exciting. It'll be interesting to see how it does on the web website. I think it'll be quite handy for shows because I quite often get asked at shows, um, oh, is there anyone selling knitting needles? Um, so to actually be able to have a, have a little display of them on my stall at shows will be really good. Right, that's it, that's everything. Tell me in the comments down below, let me know what projects you're planning to work on for the Halloween make-along, if you're gonna join us for the Halloween make-along. Um, I love to kind of hear about your projects and see all your Halloween projects. Um, make sure you tag, use the hashtags on Instagram um, so that I can keep track and see all your projects. I'll try and share them in stories and things as well. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you are new and you haven't done so so, so far, please hit the subscribe button. Um, because then you'll get notified when I put new videos up and if you could be nice and give the button a little thumbs up click that thumbs up because YouTube likes it and it lets my video get seen by more people which is always good anyway thank you very much for watching I now need to go and dye more advent yarn and I will see you all again in two weeks time bye